Peace was happening. Welcome to another edition of Riot Starter TV here on Black Power Media. If it's your first time checking in, make sure that you hit the subscribe button because Black Power Media, Media is the place where you will get all your uh, revolutionary um, uh, politics, political education. You'll learn. Uh, you're gonna learn a whole lot. You're gonna get the people that actually do the work. The people that actually um, work on our behalf. This is not the station where you will find um, some of these uh, clowns. And I say clowns because of the fact that there's so many folks out here who fake the funk and who pretend that they're, they're on the right side of the barricades when in fact they are uh, agents of oppression and they help to aid in our destruction. Um, we wanna be clear that uh, we are uh, uncompromising. We are African people. And, and we are for the liberation of African people first. Um, I wanna start off by saying, if, if it's your first time again, my name is Kalanji Changa. Um, I am a representative of the FTP movement. That is my organization. Uh, it's a smaller uh, formation under the Siafu movement, which is our, our mother piece. And as you can see across the screen right now, we have um, this banner that says the naturalfestival.com slash liberation housing. And what that is, we are currently working on a, one of our programs is to make sure that we have proper housing for our freedom fighters. Oftentimes we have uh, veteran uh, fighters and former political prisoners. They get out, they're paraded around, um, you know, folks see them on the interview circuit, they check out the lectures and then they forget about them. And oftentimes, you know, they run into problems, run into issues. And there's so many freedom fighters and, and um, who are veterans who, you know, they, they don't have any benefits because of the fact that you when you step out against the state, you know, they're clear that they want to, uh, you know, drain you and, and all of your offspring. And they want to make sure that, you know, that that you exist no more. Tonight's show. I want to dedicate to one of my elders, one of my OGs who just made his transition uh, a couple of days ago. <clears throat> and his name for folks who don't know uh, is Shaka Athenan, OG Shaka. He's from the West Coast. Uh, he's a freedom fighter, um, a comrade of Phil Marshall George Jackson. And he is the uh, former chair of the Black August Organizing Committee. He's someone that I consider one of my revolutionary fathers because um, when it comes to the history, the proper history of Black August, you know, um, he is one along with OG Kamasi who taught me um, the, the, the proper education in regards to Black August because he was there when it started. He's a, um, a former political prisoner himself and he's someone who has been committed and committed their entire life at least their adulthood to the liberation of our people. So I definitely want to dedicate this particular episode to OG Shaka Thinning and know with surety that we will uh, be bigging them up and, and putting together all types of uh, celebrations and, and work in his honor. Now, um, as always, you know, I, I try to bring on the people that matter. As always, I, I want to bring on, um, you know, the fighters. I want to bring on those who, um, who just like OG Shaka, have dedicated their lives to our work. So our guest tonight, she is uh, one of my favorite freedom fighters. You know what I'm saying? And and she is uh, a professor who's not caught up in intellectual masturbation, but she's caught up in um our liberation you know and she represents uh well and to me and to many others we consider her the foremost authority on uh haiti in regards to the revolution and the haitian revolution and of course we know that um the haitian revolution is one of the most important revolutions in the history of of um of, of african people and it's one that we look back to all the time. So our guest, um, Professor Baina Bello, um, she is an author. She is a professor, of course. Um, as I mentioned, she's a freedom fighter. Uh, she has several different pieces out. Um, her lectures are always fire. But I, I know that two books that I, that I suggest that you all get 
one in particular is uh she rose the women of the haitian revolution and also she has a a new piece that may be out i'm not quite sure if it's out just yet she'll let you know on jean jacques Dessalines. and um you know she's talking about what went on and what goes on we get so much misinformation when we talk about the haitian revolution but um tonight we're going to clear the air and i want to without further ado i want to introduce you our audience to professor baina bella peace how you doing mama baina i am fine thank you how are you Brother man Kalanzi? listen I, I feel like uh like like a fan you know what i'm saying like i met michael jackson or somebody you know what i'm saying <laughs> so definitely happy to uh have you on board as i as i told you i've been uh you know you've been been on the bucket list for lack of better words of folks who i wanted to uh to bring on and introduce to to our audience so thank you for uh you know for joining us tonight thank you for inviting me yes 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 so um the, the first thing i really want to um start off with because i think it would be be the proper thing to do when folks talk about uh revolution or they talk about the haitian revolution it's usually you know they hear a couple names um if that and you know it's just a it's treated as a a footnote in 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 in, in african history you know and of course okay. that is a disservice so if you could um please uh tell tell us why the haitian revolution was fought and why why it was so important and what the, what the results were i know that's a lot well let's try to put it in context uh as i usually teach there was no american revolution there is no french revolution because a revolution is a new mental structure that brings in a new society. If in a slave society, there is fighting between cousins, and in the end, they agree to how to continue the slavery for each one of them to get more, that is not a revolution. Right. That is feudal family feud. Okay, so in both cases, whether we talk about the French or we talk about the US, there was no revolution in those two countries, number one. Number two, the Asian revolution. The Asian revolution took on and fought the Spanish army, beat them. The British army lost over 40,000 men trying to take over the colony of Saint-Domingue. But he didn't know there were people like Toussaint, Capois, Dessalines, Christophe. And so what he thought was going to be a one week adventure to take over the island, as they had done previously. They, they just, uh, Jamaica, for example, was a Spanish colony. And then the French, the British decided to rampage the Spanish colony and take it over. That's how Jamaica became a, a British colony. So they thought they would do the same thing over here. But they didn't meet the same type of people. So the British got their largest loss. They lost over 40,000, 35,000 troops in the six month that they tried to take it over what was supposed to be a one week campaign. Wow. Number three, the French are still fighting to retain the space as their colony. So after we whipped the Spaniards and whipped the British, the French talked a lot of nonsense, right. some kind of funny freedom. And uh, they thought that might work. But then when they realized it wasn't working, so they start to pump up lots of troops. Now there are lots of, in, lots of contradictions or different informations about how many, but anything between 100 and 200,000 French soldiers were sent over here to slaughter us. Hmm. When they sent the uh, uh, expedition 
with Leclerc at the head of it, who's, uh, who was French's, uh, um, Napoleon's brother-in-law, his orders were to A, capture the 10 black generals and send them back to France. If he can't get them, kill them. And then once he get them, if he gets them, send them to France, slaughter the entire black population because Africa still have plenty. We'll go get more over there. Mm. That was what Napoleon said. So he gave orders for a genocide, except that when Leclerc got there, the men and the women he met were not what he thought. In one battle, for example, the Battle of Creta Pio, we were barely 700 of us, 700 soldiers in a fort trying to make, to do repairs. We're not about fighting, but about repairing the fort. And then the French, when the French saw us there, they collected 12,000 of their troops and besieged us in that fortress. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rochambeau. He was heading this and he said to his family, set the table, I'm gonna kill a fly. I'll be back within a half hour. <clears throat> because with 12,000 troops around surrounding us and less than a thousand people in the fort, hey, that was child's play. That's what <clears throat> he thought. Well, from March 2nd to March 24th, we were still there. No food, no water, no weapons, no ammunition, but we were killing them like flies with stones and sticks and determination. So at the end, we won the battle. More than 350 of us came out alive. So when we talk about a revolution, we're talking about something serious. We're not talking about cousins fighting over who should get more profit or yeah. cup of tea. Right on, right on, right on. Now, when we look at the impact of the Haitian Revolution, because of the Haitian Revolution, the French lost foothold in America. The French were forced to sell, even though it didn't belong to them, to sell to the United States, all the middle states. That's what, when they talk about the, uh, the Louisiana territory, people tend to think it's Louisiana, the state of Louisiana. No, it's all these middle states there. <clears throat> so the US by purchasing this land from France, more than double its size instantly and then open the way to conquer the West. So we're not talking about children stuff when we're talking about the Haitian revolution. We're also talking about it is because Haiti became an independent country. Uh, people like Miranda from South America, from Ecuador, he was trying to do a revolution and he was caught in all kinds of problems, was arrested by the US, et cetera, et cetera. So in the end, he came to Haiti and Dessaline gave him boats, people, money, weapons to go and continue his work. When Bolivar got into trouble with his revolution, he came to Haiti and received boats, people, weapons, money to continue his work. So all of the uh, freedom fighting, successful freedom fighting in South America, all of it was done with Asian weapons, Asian money, Asian guns, and many Asian soldiers. So, so, so with that being said, you know, we know that, and, and, and pardon me for, for jumping around, you know, uh, it seems that many of those nations have forgotten because we know that um, throughout the years, um, uh, colonialism and imperialism um, has in, uh, the U.S. And, and 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 its cohorts have maintained and um, 
this this declaration of war this this un um unspoken declaration of war and many of these countries have actually aided can you can you talk about a little about that like you know has there been any reciprocity well very few and far between uh the but the most eloquent i believe in my uh, appreciation the most eloquent is when they were creating the organization of american states when they were working at creating it the u.s said they didn't want to be part of it hmm. so it took the lead again in preparing the documents in the different languages in doing this and doing that and doing everything and prepared until it was all set for the inauguration. Well, when everything was set, the table was set, then the U.S. came in and the U.S. brought in money, bought everybody and demanded that IET be kicked out and not be invited to the inauguration. And that's what happened. Hmm. So we have seen a lot of this kind of treason from many of our neighbors. It's common money, it's used a lot. Uh, in all of this, I must say there is one big exception. Uh, Hugo Chavez. Chavez was one South American ruler who came to IET after the quake decided that he would help and he did tried his best to provide IT with uh, important amount of electricity hmm. in spite of all kind of under other things that went down but actually the men were so determined he gave the money a first time the money sort of disappeared he gave right. it a second time again and the third time he brought in all his technicians came almost, you know, spent a time, almost two weeks, I think he said or something he spent supervising the work wow. to ensure that the electricity plant would be, you know, and it did. Right on. Right on. Right on. Um, so I, I, I want to I want to take it back because of the fact that, again, we started off talking about you know, the, the revolution, right? And um, there were so many players. And unfortunately, uh, we hear about uh, so few. And, and certainly, we don't hear about any women. You know, you, you would, uh, the way it's painted, you would think the women were just home, you know, cooking and waiting for the men to come home or <laughs> <you know, laughs> ironing board or something, you know, and just, you know, and, and that was it. You, you wrote a, uh, a powerful, um, you put together a very powerful book um, dealing with the Shiro's. I, I want you to, um, if you could, uh, give us some examples of some of the women who, um, who were responsible for, lack of better words, uh, for this victory. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about Tantoya. Tantoya uh, is from Dahomey in Africa, today's Benin. And she was uh, an Agbaraya in the Benin army, female army. Because at the time, since the so-called first century, according to these people's calendars, the so-called first century, Benin has two armies, a female army and a male army. In, in Daome, they do not mix men and women for fighting. So there's a female army and a male army. Each have their territory, have their tactics and their ways of doing. For example, the male army takes prisoners. The female army doesn't. Hmm. Tells you fighting is for life or death. So whoever wins, wins. That's it. We're not right. going to put you someplace, feed you, and all this other nonsense. No you, time for that. This is it. Exactly. Right. So this woman was in that army when at some point she is captured into your Christian slavery. 
actually she tells the story she you know as you know our history came down to us is that when she she was in a sacred forest collecting leaves and roots for medicine when she felt eyes on her and when you go to the forest you cannot go with weapons you can only bring a little knife to pick up what you need so then when she stepped uh, turned around or whatever you know then she saw all these men and she started fighting against them she knocked off about a dozen of them before one of them came with a net like mm -hmm. you to catch uh to catch fish right uh and throw it on her and that's how they grabbed her and carried her to the slave your christian slave ship mm. so this woman is sold in uh in the colony of saint domingue and very quickly she makes plans to run away with the intent to build an army uh but very quickly she realized the people she's meeting are not the right people for that so since their motto was conquer or die she started to collect plants and leaves so she would take herself off the planet mm -hmm. but then she met another woman who had run away pregnant not far from uh delivering the baby so she stayed with this woman helping her ultimately the baby is born and the mother feeling death approaching ask Tantoya to please take the child and raise her child to no freedom now you are in a slave state slave structure and you asking me to swear that I'm going to raise your child and make sure he knows freedom that's a mm. tall order Serious. Ultimately, Tantoya agrees, and the mother passes, trans transitions. And uh, so now she's, she decides how is she going to handle the situation. If she stays out in the woods with the child, the child might not even understand what slavery is. If she returns to the plantation with the child, she will have to suffer all kinds of punishments and torture because she had run away. Right. So she went through her de deliberation and ultimately decided to go back to the plantation because she had to raise a freedom fighter has to know what he has to fight against. That's right. And this woman bring this child back. And she says that very often uh, the, the your Christian slavery system would separate them, sell them. One is sold in this plantation, the other one is sold very far away. But every time, life will bring them back together. Mm -hmm. So that's the way she was able to raise the child, teach him how to speak her language, teach him the history of great kings of Africa, teach him, uh, of course, military training, spiritual training, and healing, and learning to read the night sky because when you have to function at night if you don't know how to read the sky then you don't know when you're going towards the sea or towards mountain and etc cetera, etc cetera. so she taught him everything and this is the man we come to know as Jean-Jacques Dessalines yes sir yes sir yes ma'am yes 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 um that that's definitely um i mean you know it, it is it is it is is refreshing for lack of better words you know and 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 since you started um you started with with this great general i think that um you know i, I definitely want to talk about more more women but for the audience who are not familiar with with Desaline, um as i told you earlier i, I named my son uh after him you know what I mean? Because uh, my son is Kamathi Desalin from Didan Kamathi, and um, and of course John Clark John uh, Jacques Desalin. So I wanted to uh, make sure that, as you stated, that he understood, you know, who and what we were against, and that our enemy understood that he understands. So there's no, 
misconceptions and misconstruing you're going to have to fight um I, I want you if you could to talk about um that's who was that and what does he mean to um to to the revolution and to africa jean-jacques Dessalines is the final name he came to have because as you know within the slavery system the euro christian slavery system uh if you are purchased by Mr. Brown, then you become the property of Brown. Then Brown can decide if he's going to call you Jack or Paul or whatever. Right. If later he, he sells you to, to Mr. James, then your name will change again. So many of our people had a slew of names that they, you know, uh, during their, li their life for different, mm -hmm. what if, what, whatever reason. One reason that made me laugh at one point is that if uh, the girl of the house uh, became involved with a James. You were a James as a slave on this plantation. But a James became interested, a white James, of course, became interested in our daughter. So then now your name has to change because you cannot have the same name as somebody who is the fiancé or whatever to someone in the house. So all kinds of nonsense like this, your name is being changed all the time. So ultimately, he went through a number of names, and ultimately he named himself at the time of making his freedom free paper. Uh, he named himself Jean Jacques Dessalines. Now, this is a man who spent his life fighting, who, as I said, we won against the Spaniards, we, we, we crushed the British and pulverized the French army and then declared IT independence on uh, independent in 18 uh, January 1st 1804 now once we became independent on October 8 1804 Dessalines created an empire on his letterhead it is Jacques so then he became Jacques emperor first of IT H A Y T I empire of freedom that was the letterhead of destiny so what we created was an empire some people will say oh well why did he do a king why didn't he do a president how many presidents there were in this world at that time number one number two in africa do we have presidents or do we have our masas our obas or all of them are kings and emperors so obviously, he was structuring something based on African knowledge, not copying, you know. And even in his behavior, uh, this is somebody who would say, you know, uh, you know, even though they establish a protocol, you have to say majesty, blah, 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 blah. But for some, some people who've known him all their lives, and they used to call him, him Jaco, if that person called him Jaco, uh, and somebody want to correct this person, he was, leave her alone. She's been calling me Jaco and taking care of me all these years, you know, leave her alone. Right. Yeah. So he was not attached to any of the protocol established. Um, he, people that he was friends with, uh, who lived in a little storehouse or whatever, he'd go visit them, sit down and eat with them, uh, go dance in their, their parties. Uh, you know, people were oh, very shocked, you know, you're not supposed to do this. But he had a totally different view of what an emperor, what the emperor of Haiti was supposed to be like. See, he refused to have his wife is Empress Felicite. He refused to have a salary for his wife. He said, I'm taking care, of, I've taken care of her all the time. So yeah. why shouldn't I continue? She doesn't need a, you know, some money of her own. Uh, he also refused his salary, a different salary as an emperor. He says his general salary is good. You don't need more money. He can live with that. So it's a totally different, that is a revolutionary mental structure. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that is what created a lot of enemies for him. Hmm. Because people wanted to get, you know, into the French la di da uh, you know, nobility stuff, which right. he wasn't. Oh, so, boy. 
That's this is a good. gasoline here making this noise. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's all good. That that's the reality yeah. of, of 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 the show. This this ain't uh, like you mm -hmm. said. This ain't a a European broadcast. We 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 having a convo. This is what it's about. Um, you know. So so um, so he he wasn't handcuffed to uh like you said european the european construct or the european structures that uh so many of us uh are today it, it, it's funny i i remember I'm, I'm from uh connecticut right bridgeport connecticut mm -hmm. so i remember there was a a sister that um had a, a store shop up there and there was a sister mm -hmm. that used to come in and you know asked her where she was from one time and she said i'm french I said French. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I said, um, I said, you're not Haitian. And she put her head down. Like <laughs> as if she was embarrassed. So here it is. I had to share what knowledge I had of the Haitian Revolution with her. And from there, she began to represent. You know what I mean? She was proud because as you know, unfortunately. Our colonizers <laughs> separate us and condition us into believing that uh, you're different from me and I'm different from you, and you know you're not like those Negroes over there. You know exactly. What I'm yeah, but I, I I I laughed at first because she's like I'm French. I'm like you can't even say French. What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? This ain't even that's not your tongue. You know, and and exactly. it, it, it was it was crazy. But um, I, I want to um getting um. You know, before I talk about, before we talk about some of the other players, because we hear about Bookman, we hear about Toussaint, um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, the, the women, uh, because I think that that's, that's what we don't often get. You know, even when we talk about um, revolution or quote unquote black queens or whatever the case is, you know, it, it's, it's like you might get one or two, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, you know these the these handful and as if no one else existed so can you can you speak a little bit more on some of the um uh we don't we don't say uh women warriors they 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 they're warriors but for context you know that's why i named the book she rose so it's a very simple term that puts everything in its place right without on. needing any paraphrase Yes. Uh, all right. So let's look at very quickly. We have um, uh, Su Suzanne Simon Louverture, Suzanne Simon Louverture, the wife of Toussaint Louverture. Mm. When he was, uh, she's a woman who, of character, she would deal with uh, farming. And she was not, as much as she approved and supported Toussaint in his military activities, she was against his practice of politics mixing in the French politics. And uh, perhaps there was no way to separate being a military from the politics of French. For, but she obviously she felt there was a way and that's what she wanted. So to such a degree that when Toussaint was named governor of the island, of the colony of Saint-Domingue, she refused to go at the governor's to live at the governor's home house with him. Hmm. He went alone. Wow. So this is the kind of person of character. You know, she's not divorced. She's not separated from her husband, but she's, she, she chose to stay in the house that they were in and he can come anytime he wants here, but she's not moving to go live in that house over there. She felt no good would come out of that. And eventually she was proven right. So when uh, the French turned their jacket against Toussaint, arrested Toussaint, they arrested his wife, arrested his children, arrested his nephews, arrested his secretaries, anything. If they could find dogs, they would have arrested the dogs too. Yeah. Yeah? These are the people who teach us democracy. So they arrested every, everyone, put everybody on boats to take them to, to France. And in France, they put different members of the family in different jails so they can have no opportunity to see each other or support each other in any way, shape, or form. Uh, 
uh, Napoleon ordered to the jailers they not to torture Toussaint because Toussaint is a great general. He'll never uh, tell them what they want to know. But his wife, who's a big fat woman, that's the way he expressed it, uh, they could torture her. All the tortures they wanted to do to Toussaint, they just give it to Suzanne. And that will, she will tell them what they need to know. Well, they, Susan uh, weighed in 425 pounds when she went into the jail. And they tortured her in every imaginable way, including pulling each and every single one of her nails from her toes and her fingers, removing the nails. Uh, uh, breaking her, damaging her uh, joints. Uh, so they did okay. Oh, uh, psychological torture as well. Uh, when she, uh, when they would bring her food, they would tell her, "Oh, you're going to enjoy your meal today. We've prepared T Saint Jean's Saint Jean's uh, heart for you. We've prepared Saint Jean's legs for you. Saint Jean is her nine-year-old boy, her last born. So." But during the entire time, this woman gave only one answer to those people. Well, are they people? I'm not so sure. But anyway, sure. to those who were torturing her, whatever they asked her, she would respond only with, I will never speak about my husband's affairs to you. Hmm. They tortured and tortured, and her answer never changed. Right on. Ultimately, the British and the French got into it. The, the French lost, the British took over, and the British released her from jail. Mm -hmm. And she, she was weighed, as on her way out of jail, she was weighed 90 pounds. Wow, from 400 pounds to 90 pounds. Yes. Wow. Uh, her 10-year-old boy was killed. Uh, so... You know, these are the people who teach democracy. So anyway, the story of Suzanne Louverture, the, her biography really tells us a lot about who we are dealing with today because the mentality has not changed. There has not been no mental revolution. Therefore, there is no difference between the slaver of 1500 and those who are here today. That's right. That's right. Without a doubt. And, and folks are confused into believing that. And they think that it's some post-racial America and, you know, they look to the United Nations and they look to NATO as if they're not the same criminal enterprise and cohorts of, uh, of the U.S., France, France uh, Belgium, and, and the U.K. period. Um, uh, definitely, I, I appreciate that. Um, that was, you know, that that's... You know, we, we, we big her up for her um, endurance and her uh, uh, for, for her, her heart, because I think that oftentimes we overlook that particular strength, that the mental is sometimes worse than the physical. When you're telling someone that you're feeding them their child, you know what I'm saying? And, and they already see you as savage because they see what you're doing to them. You know, you, you know, it, it's it's a and it's a hell of a beast. Like you said, I, I don't know if we can actually call them human. Um, I, I, I would like uh, because we've heard we hear mixed uh, signals and mixed uh, uh, historical talking points when it comes to Tucson. Who who was he from from your vantage point? Because, you know, again, we, we have all types of folks saying different things. Life is a continuum, and it takes a diversity of personalities to make what we call artistry. Everyone has to deal with where they're at, the time and space that they are, and what their mission is. Um, I started to appreciate Toussaint when I started to seriously study the Loire's in Vodou. And I became aware that in fact, we are all bred, baked from the recipient, 
that is a loa. Okay, so that means if Baina is baked into a legba, she has a legba personality. She will have legba qualities and faults, and she will behave as a legba globally, generally. So a legba does what? A legba is the one who comes to open the door and trace the road towards the objective. That's what legba does. He is not to bring you to your objective. That's not his business. An ogu comes on the field when your objective is clear and you tell to ogu, that's what I want. I want independence. So by any means necessary, a goo will take you there. So to say being a legba, he did his work perfectly. He opened the gate. He traced the road. He gave to all those who followed. He had ranked all the people who would become head of IT for the next 25, 30 years. So he did his work. Right. I cannot, because I appreciate an Ogu personality like Dessaline, I cannot expect that uh, Toussaint to be an Ogu. If Toussaint behaved like an Ogu, he would mess up the work of the Ogu. Right, no. Because that Ogu would road. have no objective. He would not know the road. The gate would be closed. Where would What would he accomplish? Right, no. So we each have what we have to do. And that's why we should not judge. Because very often we don't even understand what this person came here for. And then we're deciding he should have. That's he should have like what? Who are you? Okay. No. So Toussaint did his work. And Dessaline did his. And Christophe did his. Christophe is a Shango. So he brought in prosperity. That's why under his rule... Big citadels are built, chateaus are built, uh, IT has a uh, mint its own money. That's what a Shango does. Hmm. Right on, right on. Okay. So, so much for the continuing of our street. Now, I'll touch two more women. If you one, right I'll on. touch a young girl. She's not in my book, probably in the next book, she'll be. But Princess Amethyst is a young uh, uh, mixed girl because her mom was, was raped by a colonist, a slaver. And uh, she, she was placed in school at the nun school in Okap in the north of the country. And while in that school, this girl started teaching voodoo to other girls in the convent. And when the nuns realized what she was doing, they started giving all the girls who were with her lots of work, swept, sweep the floor, wash the walls, do it or that, to tire them out so that at night they would not be doing, practicing their voodoo stuff. But that didn't stop her. So the girls continued to practice. And ultimately, these girls, one morning, early morning, two, three in the morning, each on their horse, dressed in voodoo outfit, stand up in front of the convent and start singing voodoo revolutionary songs hmm. and saying, in the end, we are going to, to, um, to Samba Bookman so we can create our country. These were 14 to 18-year-old girls. So when we talk about the Asian Revolution, it's important to understand it's a family affair. Everybody had their, had their part in it. There was nobody who was not involved. That's right. No neutrals. The elder had its part, the younger, and everything was based on competence. We don't care if you're a man or woman. If you are the surest thing we've got on the battlefield, then that's who you, you know, that's what you're going to be. So in the army... We had not only soldiers, women soldiers, but we had Captain Guillaume Charlot, we had Colonel Diane, we had uh, uh, Lieutenant Sanit Belair, who's on the 10 Wood Bill in IT. Uh, so there are lots of women, officers, and soldiers. 
in the, the official army. Now, on top of that, in all the bands, those that were not like in the structured army, plenty of women. And one such woman is Marie-Jeanne. Marie-Jeanne had a troop of 1,000 women, no men in her. She doesn't mix. Only women, 1,000 women. And these women did the most outrageous, whatever you thought was impossible. In fact, Dessaline has a quote. They were always inviting Marie-Jeanne to become part of the army. And she always refuses. She says, oh, no. And uh, so at one point, when Dessaline invited her again and she refused and says, I'm glad this woman is not, does not come into the army. Because every time we have a problem, when we talk among men and everybody says, oh, it's impossible, we can't do this, we can't do that. When we call Marie-Jeanne, she's got solutions. Hmm. So if she came into the army, I would have to give her a rank higher than mine. <laughs> right on, right on. Right. That, that. So this is a woman who did absolutely extraordinary things. She run a spy bureau before mm. the word was, you know, she had people all over Europe working for her. And that's why when, for example, they tell you uh, uh, when Toussaint saw 46 French boats arriving at the coast, blah, 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 Toussaint was not surprised because Marie-Jeanne had already told her the French were sending so many soldiers and they come and so many were coming this way, so many were coming that way. You know, that was her, her main thing was to, know what's going on, who's planning what, and let our generals know so they can make the right strategies and battle plans for whatever is coming their way. Yeah. So this woman was, I mean, her story is, I'm still working at it. There's still, there's so much different versions of everything. So, but essentially it's clear that this is a woman who had great powers, great intellectual powers, great capacity. She is a sharpshooter. She never misses a, 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 you know, she shoot at you, you are dead you hit, before her right. gets out. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. I, I, I don't know why that is, but it seems like most women I know are better shooters, shooters than men. You know, I, I don't know what it is, I, but um, in, in my in my experience, most sisters that um, that I know that are serious about that thing, you know what I'm saying? They are they're definitely better shooters than most men I know. You know. That, well, you know, traditionally in Africa, most uh, structures had women assure the security of rulers. Right on. In Dahomey, for example, they would not allow any male officers around the armed around the king. Hmm. Only the women officers could go around armed. And they tell you that the psychology behind this is this. Uh, when a woman is assuring the security of someone, she perceives you as her baby. So she must die before you do. When men is assuring the security of other men, when they hear pow, 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 everyone for himself. And, you know, it made me laugh uh, after learning this. Then when I looked at the, the Kennedy assassination, look at the reaction of the security of Kennedy when they heard shooting. That's right. They forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they forgot they were on the job. You know, he got... Mm. He got it, got his basket open, and then you know they they looking like oh, you know what I'm saying? I, I I'm I'm not ready to go, you know. Mm. So uh, I mean, but 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 and and then, I mean, European men in particular, you know, they they've always been cowards, you know what I'm saying? And that that's why they roll the way they are, why they way they do, and even with the whole police terrorism situation here, we know that it is rare that any one of them runs up on one of us, you know. Uh, you know, it, it's always some type of fear. You know, they, it's usually a gang mentality where they they capture you and, like you said, uh, toss the net on you. You know, for for lack of better words, um, you 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 talked about you touched on 
or Vudu, you talked about the, the spiritual side of things. How important and what role did uh it play in 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 the uh in in the revolution well you see that question often comes up and it often makes me laugh because by asking this it shows that actually you have a euro christian vision of spirituality hmm. okay spirituality is not something that's over there uh, I'll go to church on Sunday, right. but today I'm going to steal, kill, you know, do whatever I do, my, my, my serious business. And on no. Sunday, I'll go to church or on Saturday, I'll go to church or on Friday, I'll go to the mosque, whatever. Spirituality in Vadun, it is your soul. So there isn't a moment, you know, it's not like what did Vudu do on the battlefield? It's how you live. You see, it's like I was saying earlier, Toussaint, if we don't understand he's a legba, then we're going to misjudge him. Right. Because it is the legba principle shapes his personality. Uh, Dessaline, some people will say, oh, no, he was too harsh. He was too this. He, was... he is an ogu. That's right. So <laughs> he acts and speaks and talks as an ogu. Like he's and if I leave IT for a moment, Malcolm is an ogu. That's right. That's why he could tell you by any means necessary. Even though totally in a different structure, different context, different everything. Okay. But once you know the principles you can recognize them in human behavior so voodoo was not doing something occasionally in the revolution we won because most of us were voodoo structured yes and and and, and i pose that question because it's it's often uh as you said uh euro christian and and just European as a whole is often separated. Um, and I think that's one of the uh, one of the reasons that we we come short and fail around the world because you have some folks who are too physical. You have two some folks who think they can think and talk their way out of it. And you have some folks who think that they're gonna pray it away. You know what I'm saying? When in fact we are it is all part of the ingredient of of who we are as a whole. So I wanted to definitely, uh, you know, exactly. You know, it made me, I was looking at an interview of that computer guy who is now a medical specialist, <laughs> vaccine <laughs> experts and all. Yeah. And who says in the same sentence in the same breath, how he's a good Christian and da 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 and Jesus and Christian and everything. And that he feels that uh, we have to eliminate 80% of the world's population. Yeah. And it flows. The Christian, the Jesus, the elimination of 80% of the world's population. Yeah. And I said to myself, could I really, even if I was passionate about the whole Christian garbage, could I after hearing this, could I step back into a church? Right on. Right on. But very often we don't pay attention. But right. that's the that's nature right. of these people. They are who they are. And until we see them for who they are, they'll always win over us because we will misjudge them miss understand them we think a smile means a smile but it doesn't in fact we've been conditioned into this absolutely false concept of what they call history that i call artistry and um, we have this misunderstanding for example they everybody will say uh, or the indian lost 
Indians, of course, that's we already into a lie, the first word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not Indian, but they will say the Indian lost the war because they were not, they didn't have equal weapons. Yeah. I say, okay, let's do a little better logic. Christopher Columbus arrived on the island of Haiti with 138 men. Himself make 139. You people claim the population of the island was, some of you said, between 2.5 and 10 million. So 139 people facing, let's say, a thousand with uh, arrows, poison arrows. Do you think the gun can stand a chance? Hmm. Not, at, not at all. Not at all. Now, my, and I say 1,000, that's a minimum. Hmm. They could come 5,000. They could come 10,000 at a time. That's right. But how can 139 kill in 11 years, between 1492 and 1503, few, those few Euro Christians slaughtered 2.4 million people minimum, according to their own statistics. Right. It wasn't the gun. The lies, the fakeness, the poisoning, the uh, giving gifts that are poisoned, like a uh, 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 tuberculosis gift uh, of clothing and things that were used by people with tuberculosis, people with uh, uh, all kind of contaminated disease. Yeah. Come with big smiles, offer you gifts, and then your people saw it dying. Wolves, she cloak. Yeah. So, we don't think. We have been conditioned to repeat what they say. And that's the number one revolution that we must do today. We start to use our brain again and think quick. Right. Question everything you hear. Don't accept or swallow anything at all till you have turn it. My grandmother used to say, Turn a word in your mouth seven times before you speak it. Mm. I think today we need to turn a word in our head 77 times before we think it. That's right. That's right. That's right. We, we are here thinking that we thinking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> really thinking that we thinking and confused mm -hmm. as hell along the way. Um, Man, you 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 come with a whole lot of punches right now, you know, and um, you know, is 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 necessary. Uh, I think that um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, uh, if, if folks can't feel and understand it, then then clearly, um, you know, it, it's a hopeless situation, right? Um, I want to, uh, you know, it, it, it's so much. I, I want to um, the the term. Kubetet Bulekai. Where, where did where did that come from? Because you know we we've heard on things and and I'm and, and, and a lot of things a lot of this a uh, lot of the questions that I'm asking you, um, some may sound elementary, but keeping in mind there's some folks who know absolutely nothing about Haiti, and and some folks only know Wyclef. You know what I'm saying? So you know they in bad shape. You know so so I I, I you know I, I like clarity. You know so if you don't mind. Certainly, certainly. No, absolutely. This is necessary. Uh, okay, coupe tet means cut heads. Bulekai, burn houses. On one level, it is a war cry. Okay? Uh, we're in a structure. Again, we have to always put it in context. Uh, under slavery, you were Christian slavery, none of us have any kind of weapon. We would, we would be killed if found with a fork. Hmm. Let's not talk about a knife. Right. Okay? Even a wooden fork was forbidden. So 
when it became clear to us that the only way is to put force, you know, here we are, this force that is in front of us has slaughtered a, at least a quarter of the population of the African continent, has put opium on the Asian continent and try to put the whole population to sleep with opium, with drugs, uh, has uh, genocided the entire so-called American continent, North and South. So that's the force that is in front of us now. And in IET, we clearly see what we have in front of us. So we have no guns, we have no cannons, we have no boats. What are we going to use? What do we have? As one of our people said, there is no, the creator never puts a creation on this planet without giving it a way to defend itself. That's right. So then we must ask ourselves the question, what is, what is it we have to defend ourselves? And that's when we saw there are two things. You could make fire out of anything. Two sticks, two stones. Uh, there are all kinds of ways. So we can always have fire. And if yeah. we can get hold of a machete, since we often have to be on the cutting sugarcane and whatnot for them, then those were the two possibilities. So if you have a machete, then your defense is cut the head of whatever is threatening you. And if you don't have a machete, know how to make fire, burn it down. That's on the primary and on the physical level. Now, on a higher level, as one letter from Dessaline helped me to, understood, to understand this, he says, cutting, we have to cut our own heads. Remove, cut off that slave thinking head and replace it with a free person's head. Hmm. And burn the house means you must not be attached to anything around you. That's right. Not rank, not money, not position, not wife, children, nothing. If you're going to be a revolutionary, you must give up everything. Because everything you are attached to will be used against you. You say, okay, uh, Baina Bello, uh, give me your phone. If you don't give me your phone, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. I give you the phone. Give me the light. Blah, blah, blah. I give you the light. If you can't find nothing that you can threaten me with, you can't threaten me. That's right. And the last threat is usually, oh, I'll kill you. But you see, I know I was born to die. That's right. So you cannot threaten me with death. I'm guaranteed I will die. <laughs> That's the only thing that is for certain that I will right. die. That's right. That's right. So how could you threaten me with that? Whether it's today or next week or next year, I will die. That's for sure. Okay. I remember one time in 1974, some doctor was uh, told me you have an ulcer and blah, 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 and that uh, I would die by December. It was April, actually, 1974. Wow. And I would die by December. I, I responded immediately to this man. I said, well, all of us are going to die, but there yeah. is no guarantee that by December, which one of the two of us will be dead? <laughs> and the man was <laughs> furious. <laughs> And clearly he was wrong. <laughs> Obviously, so that, yes. 
In fact, I did double check. The year after that, I went by the hospital and asked about him, and he was dead. Oh, he did. He did die the year. Yeah. He, he, he was messing with the wrong patient. <laughs> right on. Right yeah. on. Because people yes. always want to, you know, uh, threaten you with death. Or, you know, come on. If you don't do this, you're gonna die. If you don't do this, I'm gonna die anyhow. You, you can't be a revolutionary and be afraid of death. You know, that that's like, it, it, it. there's no logic in it. That's like you are intending on living and be afraid of air. I mean, that, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. Um, you, you said something earlier. You said um, uh, you was talking about basically the, the, the fact that, that, as we say, we say we are, uh, roll with the creator because the creator never lost the fight you know what i'm saying and i think that it's it's it's, it's kind of paraphrasing something you spoke on a little earlier um I, I want to um you know and and i appreciate your time i value your time and and you know if if i'm asking too many questions let me know you know i know you're not afraid of that but um i, I want to definitely uh you know seize the time while you're here um you, you spoke on uh Christoph, and we know that Christoph and, and, and folks like Bookman, um, these are two other names that that uh, that we don't get to hear about or hear too often. Can you uh, give us a little something on on those two uh, brothers, if you if you will? OK, Bookman duty was sold from Jamaica to the colony of Saint-Domingue. Because his mother, I have not been able to do all the research, but it seems his mother was not somebody to play with. She was not submissive. So as punishment, her only child is sold to a different island. Hmm. And uh, so he was apparently raised Muslim. And so when he came to IT, he had a small Quran attached to his body. And when they couldn't take it away, even though he was only 13 years old, but he obviously was a very powerful 13-year-old boy, when they couldn't take that away from him, they decided to burn it on him. So, of course, in the process, burn a whole side of him and whatnot. Uh, again... These are the people who teach us about t treating children properly, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, have a lot Humanity. of laws about. Right. Right. We must always remember. So, book money sold and eventually become involved in voodoo, studies the voodoo, and became a hungan. Uh, so, by the time the, the um, 1791, when the the first major gathering, the Congress, to determine what are we going to do so our children and our children's children do not suffer what we're suffering today. Well, Bookman was among those who participated. And uh, he was the person who took the lead because the decision at the Congress was there is only one way, this beast does not understand anything but force. So if we're going to do anything, it has to be put the same amount of force. You know, when you're fighting against force, if you come to me with 180 pounds and I'm 160, I'm bound to fall unless I have some other forces that I could call on to make the difference. But the thing is, if you're 180, I have to be 185, 190 to crush you. That's right. So that was what they understood. And so... Uh, we made plans to begin fighting, and Bookman was the person who took the lead in that particular time. And he did so well that within three months, everything stopped in the North. One third of the colony was in absolute fear. Uh, industry stopped. Everything, nothing was moving because the revolutionaries were everywhere. Uh, whatever they couldn't they would burn whatever had to stop, but they they did whatever they had to do. 
And ultimately, they did capture Bookman, uh, cut his head, put it on a spike with a sign, Bookman, head of the revolutionaries, to create fear in everyone who passes by. But what happened is that people would pass by and touch the head, give me your strength. Mm. And the fight went on. And from Bookman, we produce Biasu, we produce Papillon, we produce this one and this one and this one, and then we produce Toussaint Louverture, and then we produce Jean-Jacques Dessaline, and Dessaline took us to independence. but he was a key player. And that's the other thing that often the silence, they don't want to let us see how um, the connection, okay. Bookman, a key revolutionary in IT's artistry is from Jamaica. Christoph, the only king of IT is from Grenada. Hmm. Toussaint, uh, the first big time uh, large army structure general in IT was born in Daomi. Uh, so it's all of us bringing our forces together. And that's why IT does not view the other islands as different places. If any island had a problem, IT is always ready to go help. Know. Know. You know, Dessaline has a speech where he says, oh, my goodness, we heard that he heard that they kill um, Del Gress. Uh, Del Gress was doing a revolution in Guadeloupe. He says, why couldn't I find a way to, to, to go there and help him? You know, like, wow. so that's the other thing they don't want us to understand is that we know about each other. Right. When there was a revolutionary in Jamaica, Somehow, revolutionaries in Haiti knew about him. Right. Somehow, we heard about what was going on with, in Guadeloupe, what's going on in Martinique. But it's written as if we were we, we each in a glass something, have no clue right. what the other, and we only have what they say about each other to us. Right. That's just tough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I believe I, I have another engagement, so we'll have to come to a conclusion. Cool. Hey, listen, I'm 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 grateful for for the time you've given us. Um, I, I would only ask in closing, how can the the uh, audience uh, purchase your books? I know you have, um, you know, again, you have uh, the Shiro's book, but also the new one. Is is the new um, book on Dessaline? Is it complete already? Or. Uh, the French version is is on Amazon, okay. Uh, but the uh, English is not yet uh, okay. available. Okay. okay. Uh, unfortunately, Ubiola should have given you the link as to where to order the Shiro's book. I it's do no not problem. have. That. We, we we will put it in the we we'll put it in the uh, the chat at the in in the inside of the, uh, the YouTube. So we'll make sure that folks do get it. Um, I know you have to go, so I, I want to say thank you so much gratitude uh to you for spending the time that you have spent with us and we're looking forward to uh seeing more of it i know you're doing a book signing in atlanta on sunday so um you know for folks Medu who are, bookstore yes at medu bookstore from three to five yes yes so so folks who are in atlanta area or nearby you can come by and um and and you know purchase a book you know hopefully get her to sign it and and we'll, she'll be at uh medu bookstore right here at the greenbrier mall here in atlanta so uh mama baina we'd like to thank you again and uh uh i intend on seeing you sunday i thank you yes, and yes. i thank all those who will follow and be inspired to do better that's right what our duty is to be each day better than the one we were yesterday. Without a doubt. Have a great one. Yes, we thank you. Thank you. you you've been checking out Professor Baina Bello. Um, I told y'all she was harder than the times. Y'all weren't ready for it. 
make sure you definitely check out uh her books we will put the uh the link to um to the shiro's book we'll actually put the the, the french version of uh of john jacques uh Desalines book in as well and we'll keep you posted on um on on anything else that's coming up check out some of her videos now i'm looking at the at the i didn't get a chance to check out the chat today y'all try to stay focused so forgive me for that but um i'm looking at the numbers this is what i need you all to do because of the fact that this convo right here i don't know where else you would get um this type of information especially when we're talking about uh women freedom fighters you know and and the history when you talk about uh the the haitian revolution or as it's known as Haiti, the Haiti revolution. I, I, I don't I don't know where, and and these numbers should jump off the roof because this is what folks ask about. They want to learn about, they want to talk about where the women fighters are. And oftentimes we get these bootleg versions of uh of, of freedom fighters, period. And we look for the women who have some type of um who, who, who look uh fashionable but revolution is not a fashionable thing the movement our liberation movement is not a fashionable thing you know what i mean i encourage you all to get involved to join an organization okay to join an organization join a revolutionary organization join a revolutionary and an african revolutionary organization not just any old organization that sounds good and looks good on the internet i represent an organization called the ftp movement and it is a part of the Siafu movement. And the Siafu movement is our larger collective. And a part of the Siafu movement, we have the Urban Survival Preparedness Institute. Um, we have the African Martial Arts Institute. Shout out to my comrade, Balagoon, who's in the chat right now. Um, we have uh, 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 Mama's Army. We have the Siafu Youth Corps, the National Coalition of Combat Police Terrorism. Um, uh, and, and, and so many more, I mentioned the FTP movement, but you know, we have uh, a, a collective, we have the 52 Blocks ATL, 52 Blocks Atlanta, which is another uh, fighting system we have out here as well. But I'm encouraging you all, you know, we invite you all to join our ranks, to become a part of an organization where wherever you are, you don't have to join our organization, but join an organization that's true to what it is we're, we're here to do. Um, oftentimes folks get confused. And again, we, we're looking for what's fashionable, what looks good. You know, you got to get grimy. You got to get gritty. You have to get dirty in order for you to, uh, in order for us to get this freedom that we're talking about. But again, we thank you all. I appreciate your support, support and riot starter TV. Uh, make sure you go out and, um, you know, support our programs, the uh, Liberation Housing Campaign. We think it's an awesome campaign and you all should check it out. Um, and that said, uh, uh, you can go to the naturalfestival.com. It's scrolling across the bottom, the naturalfestival.com slash liberation housing. Uh, again, I want to say that I, I dedicate this particular show right here to my OG, OG Shaka Athenan, who... Um, you know, you'll be hearing more about over the next couple of days. Go back to the archive. Check out some of the work we have because we have some some dynamite stuff. Riot Starter TV. Um, check out Warrior Class. Warrior Class is, I mean, you're not going to get some of the things that we're bringing to the table. You know, so we encourage you, we implore you to check out uh, work. Check out our Mix What I Like. Check out Black Miss Podcast. Um, check out... Um, Luke Mon Nation and 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 all the other shows, our, our brother Subiata, uh Chajua, you know, Sundays, the whole nine, uh remix morning show. Continue to support our efforts here at Black Power Media because you know, if I, I don't know where else would you where else you're gonna get what we're bringing you. I and that, that's not saying and shout out to Brokish as well. That's not saying that they, that it's not programs out there that exist like this but um i'm just saying they're not bringing it to this level and and you know i'm sorry we, we just have too much heat that's not bragging that's none of that it's just like look if you're serious about revolution you're serious about our liberation you know we got it you know what i'm saying we got it check out the archives but anyway i appreciate you all shout out to sister may in the background um doing production 
Um, and shout out to all our comrades from the FTP movement, from the CIFU movement. And, um, you know, continue till victory. Stay ready for revolution. We out. Right Start the TV. Thank you.